Dr. Weil, you move the needle to help another marginalized patient in dire need of a transplant. Tell us about that. The other patient that sticks out is a young man named Brian who was 19 and had developmental delay and he was uh, very shy, emotionally immature and had cognitive uh, impairment as well. And we wondered whether or not he could be compliant with a complex medical regimen following transplant. And in fact, a number of transplant centers had turned him down for that very reason. But we decided ultimately to take a chance on him. And I'll be honest, people in the room were skeptical, wondering if we should use lungs for a person like, like him, whether it was a good use of our organs. And that's, again, injecting our own value system about who we think should live or who should die. And that's best avoided. And I did everything I could to avoid it. And we ended up transplanting this young man, and he went on to live 20 years later and had a very fulfilling life, yeah. So that was gratifying. Extremely gratifying. Absolutely. And I'm, you know, I can't imagine how, how grateful he was that you took a roll of the dice on him, right? And, and look how his life turned out. Now, doc, Dr. Wild, you know, incredibly high highs, incredibly low lows. I imagine you experienced a lot of what we're talking about today in healthcare in general with COVID burnout. Let me ask you, ultimately, why did you decide to leave? What was the final straw for you? Well, I recognize the impact it was having on me personally, but more important than that, I, I had two daughters uh, that were young then and growing up. They're 16 and 19 now. I had a wife who's a nurse who understood what I was going through, but also didn't get the full me. Uh, I came home uh, not exactly engaging uh, with the family. I, I really was out of bandwidth, essentially, to be fully there. And I knew that I had to make a choice. It was either my career or my family, and I, I picked my family. Dr. Wild, let me ask you. I mean, I, and obviously you made the right choice. As you look back over the course of your life, I wonder if there are any moments that really stick out as you really regretting that the work caused you to miss with your with your wife with your daughters I, i'm afraid there were more than one there were several you know there was the missed soccer games there were the dinners with my wife where i was on the phone fielding an organ donor call and then after the salads were served we needed to go there were a number of them and i think worse than that it was just the emotional de detachment i was preoccupied to say the least uh, with the work that was going on at the hospital and even when I was physically there I, I wasn't emotionally there and for the wives out there and the significant others out there how could she get mad at you for being emotionally absent because you're saving lives right and so that's a that's a tricky conversation I can't even imagine that you know it, it, it is tricky and, and it's frustrating and I recognize that late in my career, but, but it's frustrating because on the one hand, I'm not playing golf and not there. I, I'm actually doing important work and she thought it was important, but at the same time, did it really matter at the end of the day that I wasn't there for whatever reason? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's so interesting. Dr. Wow, this is so critical and we have a national shortage when it comes to organ donors. What is it that you would like for our viewers to understand about transplants today? Well, the main thing is, is that we do have an organ donor shortage. And right now, it's a 50-50 proposition whether or not an individual even will consent to organ donation. In some parts of the country, it's less than 50%. And you not only have to sign your driver's license card at the DMV, you have to tell the people around you of your intention to be an organ donor. Tell your family and friends because at the end of the day, the doctors at the hospital who may be taking care of you if tragedy happens are going to ask the family members what your intention was. And I just encourage everybody, if you're so inclined, to tell your family and friends that you want to be an organ donor.